Today is going to be a great day. I am Nikki G, your host. Welcome to The Lone Doctrine, the food for thought exploration station, and your place in making today better than yesterday. We keep it short, simple, actionable, and practical because time is limited. It is the end of a season, the end of the school year, a deemed time where things wrap up. We're coming into June and heading towards summer. Not to mention, we're halfway through the year. What? What? Now more than ever, a lot of those elements can cause stress. But you're in luck because this month's topic is stress. We're here to explore how we can manage stress in a healthier way as we wrap up the season and continue to stay on the right, whatever works for you, and track. So let's start off with a few tips on how to de-stress before we dive into the topic of stress. We're at the point in the year where there's a lot more obligations before the summer season begins. Now, everyone's seasons are different. You might be going into the typical summer, time off, vacation season, or maybe your summer is the busiest season. No matter which way, stress can be in the mix of it all. Here's something we constantly encourage here at The Lone Doctrine. Putting, at least trying to put, any food for thought that resonates with you into action. You may be saying to yourself at times, I know, I know, I've heard that before, you're not telling me anything new, but how much of that, what you know, have you actually put into action? How much is a part of your daily routine? How are you changing your habits for the better? So, as we share some food for thought on practical and actionable ways to de-stress, ask yourself and encourage yourself to put them into action. So here's one way to de-stress. Unplug. Yes. Spend even just 10 minutes a day away from your phone, your computer, the TV, your tablet. So much of our lives is consumed by electronics and it can cause a lot of stress. Side note, my cousin is a crisis counselor and he just attended a seminar where they did a study on how social media affects today's youth and it was a huge factor in the fact that 70% of youth have depression and suicidal tendencies because of technology in today's world. But how much it affects us and how it can distance us from real life is shocking. You might be saying, but I need my phone for work, as do I. Most of my work is through my phone or computer, but even so, A little time to unplug can go a long way. You might be saying, but I need to keep in contact with my family. Yes, this is also true for myself. With all the medical needs of my family, the amount of emergencies makes it so I have a hard time putting down my phone. But in any case, find the barriers, but still unplug when you're able. For example, when I'm with my family where medical needs are necessary, I can put my phone down. Even when I'm away, I can keep my phone on but leave it somewhere besides my pocket and unplug a little. I can hear it if need be, but I'm taking a moment. If you're curious or even not curious about your usage, your time is now an option on your smartphone. It will show you how much time you're using apps, how much time you're on social media. It'll show you just how much you're on, and some apps even let you put on a timer. This is a great tool to use to de-stress because most of us know you can get so lost in video after video after update after comment after picture. All of a sudden, an hour goes by, and... It's also something to look into if you have children, setting those timers, setting those boundaries in order for you to have a daily routine of unplugging each and every day to lessen stress, unplug. Here's another food for thought. Find ways to take the edge off. Stress can be ever present. 
It can be the lingering emotion that travels with you wherever you go. Sometimes you need to start with just one small step before we dive into working through the root of the stress ball. For example, find something you enjoyed that's easy to do like listening to music, going for a walk, taking a warm bath, reading a book. Books are an amazing way to make today better than yesterday. Now, you might be thinking, who has time to read? As a Lone Doctrine listener, you can get a free trial to Audibles. Audibles through Amazon is in part our sponsor and provides thousands of books at the tip of your finger. You can access so much food for thought through your computer, tablet, and even your smartphone. Now, truth be told, Audibles is awesome. I'm always on the go. It's always with me, and it constantly creates an environment where I can keep learning, thriving, and most importantly, keep my mind on the right track. I can listen on a walk, in the car, exercising, even traveling. I highly recommend checking it out. Just go to LoanDoctrine.com, and in the resource section, you can sign up for a free trial. It's super easy, and you can cancel at any time, and it's a very, very dependable company. And the great thing is when you do sign up, you're not only adding this ultimate resource to your betterment, but you're also helping the Lone Doctrine stay on air. So visit LoanDoctrine.com and in the resource section, make your day better than yesterday. The fact is, there are simple steps you can take which put you in a better mindset to handle stress on the whole. Just taking the edge off is a good start. I don't have time. It never works. I'm too busy. I've tried and I just get bored and move back into stress mode. The excuses can go on and on. The more productive approach is to notice is if we just take the edge off, not necessarily being a quick fix. It's just enough to take the stress down a notch or two. If what you're doing isn't working, Try something new. Take up a new hobby, build something, put together a puzzle. The options, if you're open to them, are endless. And one more food for thought for the week. To combat stress, it's scientifically proven that practicing gratitude will give you better emotional well-being and better physical health. To close out this week, I'd like to explore some findings of that scientific proof done by UC Davis, conducted and is still conducting on how we practice the power of gratitude and the scientific data that correlates on the nature of gratitude, its causes and its potential consequences for human health and well-being. So here's some summary of their findings when they held controlled groups of people really creating a habit of being grateful, having gratitude every single day, whether it be keeping a journal, making a list, waking up and saying 10 things they're grateful for, saying 10 things they're grateful for before they go to bed, a very conscious practice of gratitude. Here's some of their findings. In an experimental comparison, those who kept gratitude journals on a weekly basis exercised more regularly reported fewer physical symptoms, felt better about their lives as a whole, and were more optimistic about the upcoming week compared to those who recorded hassles or neutral life events. A related benefit was observed in the realm of a personal goal attainment. Participants who kept a gratitude list were more likely to have made progress towards an important personal goal, whether it be academic, interpersonal, or health-based, over a two-month period compared to subjects in the other experimental conditions. The other experimental conditions were those not practicing gratitude. Participants in the daily gratitude condition were more likely to report having helped someone with a personal problem or having offered emotional support to another relative to the hassles or social comparison condition. In a sample of adults with neuromuscular disease, a 21-day gratitude intervention resulted in greater amounts of high-energy positive moods, a greater sense of feeling connected to others, 
more optimistic ratings of one's life, and better sleep duration and sleep quality relative to the other group. Children who practice grateful thinking have a more positive attitude towards school and their families. Gratitude heals, energizes, and transforms lives. The practice of gratitude can be a major factor in how we handle stress and also our perception of stress. How grateful are you for what you have here and now? Even when times are at their lowest and toughest, there's always, always something to be grateful for. And at any given moment throughout the day, you can take a couple seconds to say, thank you. Here's a great quote I came across this week from a book called Miracles Now. Often people say to me, I don't have time to meditate or I don't have time to list what I'm grateful for or to even be grateful. Or even for some, I don't have time to pray. My response is, do you have time to feel like, imagine all the time your mind wastes in dwelling on your stress. Imagine how much time, if you're willing to flip the script, you'd have to be grateful and less stressed. This week and every week, this day and every day, keep fighting the good fight. It's a